There are three options for installation of a containment backflow preventer. This video will review the pros and cons of installing a backflow preventer in a subterranean vault. This would have to be considered the legacy method still widely practiced among many designers today, but as most of you know, an RPZ can never be installed below grade. But beyond the issue of being unsuitable for RPZs, there are compelling reasons to discontinue the use of vaults altogether. So let's look at the considerations for the designer. Safety, liability, and changing demands. We've all seen the extraordinary measures OSHA imposes to legally access vaults for maintenance tasks. Fresh air exchange hoses, tents, extra men. The costs are more and more prohibitive, but frankly, the risk of serious injury is real as well. But beyond the cost of safety for on-site workers, liability issues persist. When a vault floods like this one, the mandatory test cocks are submerged, and in that event, a violation of the International Plumbing Code has likely already occurred. The water may look clean, but consider what would likely make up the constituents of that water. Runoff of lawn chemicals alone make this a clear and present danger to the water supply. In fact, it led the USC Foundation of Cross Connection and Hydraulic Research in 2005 to change their recommendation of even double check backflow preventers installed in subterranean vaults. Quote, the foundation's recommendation would be to install the double check valve above grade. Finally, changing demands. As a designer, you're obviously preoccupied with new construction, and rightly so. But buildings, through their normal life of changing tenants over time, change uses with respect to hazard levels. And hazard levels, or more precisely, the named hazard threshold, has become a moving target. Around the corner from our office in Nashville, I snapped this picture. It sits in front of a warehouse owned by an automotive dealer. When they bought the property and erected the building, they put a double-check backflow preventer down in that vault with the meter. A few years later, the city changed an ordinance that redefined their particular use to high hazard. When they sought a permit to upgrade their HVAC system, the city forced them to change to an RPZ. So after constructing this huge vault, they now leave it almost empty with an RPZ in an enclosure perched on top. They easily paid three times for a single solution just because they began with a vault. Now this enclosure, if you can call it that. It's safe to assume that the original design did not call for such a ridiculous setup. But nevertheless, if you were the designer on this job and happened upon it, you'd feel pretty bad. In the foreground, you can see a common vault hatch. No doubt there was at some previous time a double check backflow preventer down in that vault with the water meter, but something changed. It might have been a tenant whose defined use constituted a higher hazard than the original user. On the other hand, it might have been a change in the purveyor's threshold for what constitutes high hazard, just like we saw in Nashville. Both of these scenarios are becoming commonplace. By the way, this beautiful enclosure whose height is sadly insufficient to cover the tops of those OS and Y valve shutoffs is actually a fiberglass shower stall turned on its side. <laughs> what are you going to do? Because of the changing demands of containment backflow preventers, it will soon be clear that the subterranean vault is the most expensive option available to a designer because of the probability of an RPZ retrofit in the future. Learn more about best practices in containment backflow preventer installation at safetycover.com. Thank you.